Roll call. Check your question. Next item of business, uh, minutes. Number A, consider an act of approval of the minutes of the City Council meeting held December 4th, 2014. It's 3061 so more like 5000 that the 
city has retained in the town. And those are um, no, no driver's license and no insurance. Right? And it's not good for anyone if someone's driving without insurance. No at all. Next item, staff report, get the police department. Chief. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. All right. All Last quarter of 2014, uh, the department's uh, doubled the amount of uh, citations issued for the same quarter in 2013. And that's now for the first three quarters of 14. So the guy was doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Next report will be the volunteer fire department. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Starting out the new year the correct way. All right, time to go fire rescue monthly run report for January 2015. Total calls for the month of January, 84. <coughs> These numbers that I've given you include the encompass our entire response area, not just the city of Chicago, but our entire response area. Okay, of these 84, structure fires, five. Grass fire, brush fires, two. Unauthorized burns, three. Activated fire alarms, two. Motor vehicle collisions, 23. Other assist public, four. EMS calls, 45. And Acadian transports, 24. Bird ban in Bear County is still in effect which means the bird ban in China Grove is in effect. We have been allowing burning, but again, citizens of China Grove must remember, you must obtain written, or excuse me, authorization, and this is done over the phone through either myself, or you can contact the ladies up here at City Hall, uh, but you do need to have authorization to do this. Uh, if not, it could wind up in a uh, citation, so please, Make sure that you call. And if you call me like on the weekends and maybe I don't answer, that doesn't mean yes. That means I didn't answer the phone, okay? So don't start burning because it doesn't mean yes. And please do not call me and tell me we're going to be burning 
I'm just calling you because that's not the process. The process is you have to call to get permission. Everything is about the weather conditions for that day. So please wait for authorization. Either I said through myself or through the ladies up here because we stay in contact. I stay on top of the weather conditions and I stay in contact with Bear County uh, Fire Marshal's office. So I said between Ben and I, we should be able to get an answer. So I can't remember just because myself. I don't answer the phone or they don't. Does not mean yes? Okay? Thank you. What the hell has been going? Uh, we start issuing permits at 8 o'clock every day. Fine. Just FYI. Yes, ma'am. That money I talked about? <coughs> awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anytime you want. Okay. You got one coming up Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. This is to be heard. House Council for Assistance to address City Council any issues of concern. No City Council discussion or action can be taken if the item is not on the agenda. Mayor reserves the right to option to recognize persons. Anyone speaking who is not recognized by the mayor will be considered in violation of the rules of the meeting and will be escorted out from the meeting. All recognized persons shall address the mayor. Please finish your remarks for three minutes and state your name and address for the record. No personal attacks against staff or party council will be allowed. And the first person we have is Ms. Cost. <laughs> the only person. Okay, I've talked about it before, and I would like to address the thing about the tax rate in China Grove. If anybody saw the article, it was in November, and there was a county paper about what China Grove pays compared to a lot of the other little cities, and which is very low. And I think we can do better. In a small raise, I think we can do better with the keep up the fire department, the police department, the streets. And I would say, let's hold our community to a higher standard and let people know why it is important to raise the tax and let the residents vote. I think we need to put it on the ballot to let people vote. And that's kind of what I have to say. <laughs> Any particular <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, we'll move on to old business. Item A, report on the 2014 street maintenance project. <coughs> okay, street repair, street maintenance. Uh, first, I want to tell you, uh, we are getting a well-rounded education on street repairs. We've learned a lot about rock, different oils, how it's applied, and different things. So we've learned a lot about it, and uh, there's been a lot of discussion uh, with the contractor and also with our civil engineer, uh, a lot of finger pointing. Uh, what happened? why it was done this way and that. And we was considered running some tests, but uh, the test probably would not tell us exactly, and it was expensive. So we did have a couple people come in and kind of walk the streets and give us a little educated guess of what went wrong. Mm -hmm. So uh, we uh, finally got to where we had a meeting on December the 29th. We had a meeting with the contractor and our civil engineer mm -hmm. and discussed you know, these issues. Uh, it, was a, it got a little heated and uh, there was some hard negotiations, of course. That's, uh, I know more about that. That's more my expertise in streets anyway. So we uh, was able to keep the meeting together and uh, got things straightened out. The contractor finally agreed that he would do more than what he was plan on doing there. Uh, he was going to finish the punch list, which we had a pretty good long punch list. He said he would do the punch list, completely do the punch list, and come back in and do a level up, which uh, that was part of what we figured some of the things he didn't do in the beginning was he didn't level up on a couple of streets where he didn't do the complete reevaluation on one side of the tree being a little bit of dirt beneath it. So he's, he's agreed to go over all the streets and do uh, the level up, and uh, what that is, is fill up the little holes on the fence and stuff like that. 
with uh, asphalt. He's going to go over all the streets with asphalt. Then he's going to go over all the streets, everything that he's done with another top coat. This top coat he's going to use number four uh, trap rock. Now this is a little darker rock, so the streets will be a little darker and it shouldn't be dusty. There you go, that lime rock, limestone rock with the probably that problem with rock, the dust and stuff. So he's agreed to go over with a number four crab rock. Uh, we kind of would like to have number five, but he says he don't like to work with number five. It has a lot of loose gravel, so he offered the number four, so that's where we had to go with it. So now what we're waiting on is the weather. He, uh, he wants about two weeks or so of some good sunshine weather before he starts on there because that asphalt needs a, some warm weather. The last email I, I, I talked to uh, our civil engineer on a couple days ago was he said that uh, sometime in March they're going to line up and do this. <coughs> so uh, is that going to cost China growth more? Nope. Yeah, uh, that's where we negotiated. <laughs> like I said, it was hard negotiating. It was a little bit hard, uh, but uh, he finally agreed. He, 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 know, he knows he did some things wrong. Of course, he says some he did and everything. But when the final, when we walked out the door, was he agreed to this? Now, hopefully, hopefully that he sticks to his word. Did you guys ever consider? Uh, Firing this contractor and uh, pulling this bond and hiring a new contractor to do the. Uh, oh, yes. And that's still, we still got it. They don't come out the way we want. We still have that back here. So we just didn't want to go that way. It's a rough, hard way to go. Well, I know I live on Sherman sure Bend there, but you know, I know when he first time he's supposed to go there, he's supposed to do the reclamation of the base right there. And I still got grass growing in my street there, so I know he didn't go very deep on, on that. Uh, on that base, because the grass is growing, growing right now on the street. Maybe we'll bring that up to you. You got an address? Yeah, so uh, we, we, we walk the streets, we never see where any reclamation that there was grass. It's not a flow of them from the edge of the road, but still, there shouldn't be no grass if it's really compact and tight. Yeah, if anything, we, like I said, we did walk and we didn't see anything where there was any reclamation. Now, some places like on the uh, tree band where they didn't do the complete reclamation, there was some grass. Otherwise, uh, we didn't see anything. If you give us an address, we'll sure check it out. All right, 7615, triple bin. 7615? Yeah, I'll, I'll sure let him know. And uh, he, uh, that's another thing our, our uh, civil engineer, he kind of felt bad that he uh, didn't stay on top of it, a few things too. And he, he promised to also in this meeting that he's going to stay on top of this and uh, go out there with him after they do the level up. Check and make sure it's, it is leveled up and done right before they get the top coat. So that's the way we come to an agreement right now, and it should be done sometime in March. You were talking about doing this in November, so Triple Meadow was the next project. So when are we looking at Triple Meadow? Are we waiting? I think we want to make sure, I'll give you a little bit on that. We want to make sure we get this out of the way, and I'll, I'll tell you something else we did. Uh, I was invited to uh, Lavernia. Uh, the, the contractor at Lavernia is Ruben Cobbis. Uh, I think he's uh, the guy I work for him, is Jim Cummings or something like that. He invited uh, Clemens and myself out to Lavernia to look at some of the streets that Lavernia done. Now, Lavernia, they, uh, they hire like a, a contractor of like three years three years the whole project instead of bidding out separate things. Of course, we didn't know who it was. It's a good thing we didn't do that. We, we, we found out what kind of contractor we had. They were this, this contractor, he's the one who kind of looked at our streets and, and agreed that we did get a bad job. And he doesn't do anything except number five crap rock. So we went out there and looked at the streets. Uh, I met with the mayor out there, Robert Gregory, and I also talked to a, another councilman that was a friend of mine, Eloy Carmier, and we looked at a lot of their streets out there. And what Ruben Cobbis wants to do, and I told him that we was going to wait for him to let you through with this, he wants to come in and do a small street, one of the maybe small streets off of 
Terra Bonita or something, just a real small section. Do it with the number five trap rock. <coughs> something, uh, you know, small enough that we don't have to get digs on something we can do them. He liked to do that. And uh, that's something we'll be discussing <coughs> later on after we get through with this. And that way we can go look at it and we can see exactly if that's what we want or not. Okay. That's, that's our plan. Get this out of the way. Then we'll talk about getting him to come in here and do a little bit. And then we'll go look at it. And then we'll go from there. We'll come after your street, Tim. <laughs> Hopefully we do a better job. I say, I, I, I learned a lot about streets that I didn't know before. I thought you just put out there and be with somebody took to care of the streets. But there's a lot, in, a lot involved. Let their practice on the other streets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's practical. It's just to the level it up, whatever the hole is. I don't know exactly how to do it, but I'm going to put Mike, it Mike, Mike, probably what they'll do is what, what, go with the maintainer. Yeah, they're just, they're just going to blade it, blade it, and then he's going to chip seal it with the number four black rock. What about the crown? That'll be the same as it is now, but it should be a little more. I don't think we have a problem with grounding the earth oil. So how long is it supposed to last? Because that guy was talking about the street lasting five years. I talked to him about that. I told him he was misinterpreting like that. And he, he uh, apologized to us, Mike, uh, he apologized for giving that interpretation. And, uh, it was a false mistake. That was false statement. a false statement. Uh, and, and he made a couple other statements there that was in the South Tower Reporter. And he did apologize to Mike and I both that he did say some things where he was taking out contents there that uh, was not true. And the streets will last longer in five years. Well, I hope so. I did want to compliment Mr. McCarty. He has spent a lot of time and effort uh, forward in getting this right for us. We've all have a, have a hand in it, but uh, I want to tell him thank you because let's go get her. <laughs> He's got us on the right road, guys. Thank you. Like I say, I'm sorry that it didn't turn out, but we learned a lot and we'll get it right. <laughs> Deep, real deep, real deep. They had already been done, but, but grass was already started. But you're talking about more real deep. See, uh, we didn't do, we didn't reclaim all of Terrapinita. We so didn't reclaim all of it. This was four houses coming this way, back right from the corner of two. So I don't know. We haven't been back by, but I was just wondering if yeah, it's a shot, it's a shoddy job. Yes. Yeah. 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 So wide. It's my Where the grass is coming up through the asphalt, we ought to apply a round up or something to, to kill it. Otherwise, it's going to keep coming through if there are locations there. Yeah, but I think the problem is not the grass coming up. It's, it's that it's so shallow that's why the grass is coming up. Am I right? No. <laughs> no, there's, there's a crack in it and some yeah. water and. Oh, see, that's where they get through, and they're growing, they're germinating, and things didn't get sealed properly. I'll break that up to the engineer that he needs to check the area of grass and, and spray it maybe every time. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Under our business, item B, discuss pre clearance business permit, Casey Bartek, Bartek Construction. Here. Here. Okay. At the last council meeting, I was uh, requesting a variance in zoning from a class one to a class two. Uh, I've got copies of some maps to kind of give the council a better idea of where the property lies on Foster Road. And I have a few, uh, a few questions about what what will require the variance change and what will be allowed on the property. And one of my first questions was, uh, does the city of China Grove fall under the ETJ of San Antonio? No, we have our own ETJ. Okay. 
And then, uh, in order for this property to work for me, there's a few things uh, that I didn't find in the city ordinances, and uh, I'd like to see maybe address those. Uh, above ground fuel storage tanks. Is there a uh, is there a, a code for fire marshal on, on this? I don't think citywide we have anything from our municipality. Right. How many gallons are we looking at? Uh, probably no more than ten thousand gallons. Decent fuel. Uh, maybe five thousand gallons of diesel and five thousand gallons of uh, gasoline. Gasoline, I'm probably would not do, but. It'd be maybe off-road diesel, 5,000 gallons, and 5,000 gallons of uh, on-road diesel. I noticed there was something in the, in the ordinance uh, pertaining to uh, LP tanks. Yeah. And I have no plans for LP tanks. Yeah. You have a city gas tank running right in front of the property. Exactly. Exactly. There's no need for that. Uh, and then maybe a water well. A, a, a small domestic well. You mean drill for water? Yes, ma'am. You won't be able to. I tell you right now. <laughs> that, that's pretty dry over there. Yeah, we're over a fault. Okay. And there's no water. <laughs> okay. Let's but see. as far as the city's concerned, is there is I'll there a special check. permit? I'll have to check that out. Okay. Uh, or is that we just do have the salts of water now. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they drilled years ago. Early 60s. Yeah. yeah. And drilled everywhere and tried to start their own water company here. Mm -hmm. and it did not happen. If, under the, the rules right now, SALS is our water, water provider, okay, as such, and they will have rules on a well, okay, and most likely, if it's going to be a commercial use, they're going to have stricter uh, requirements on it than we would have with a residential well, okay, and then uh, working hours, uh, hours of Business being open. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, was a construction company. Right. Uh, our work allows us to work after hours, but not all the time. Uh, so I was going to ask about is there any ordinances uh, for noise pollution, uh, elimination pollution? <coughs> there, there is an ordinance for noise. Okay. And that's in your packet tonight. Is it in there? The nuisance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a nuisance ordinance and it has a, the amount of decibels for okay uh, that they can't be over at certain times too. Okay. And that. Uh, we can get you a copy of that. Okay, I think I have one, but I I did not you didn't see it in there? I didn't see it in there. I didn't see it addressed in there, so that's why I was asking. And uh, those are provide, all my questions that I have for council. We can provide that. Uh, you talked about this construction business. Is that building buildings or building roads? No, it's it's a utility for utility it. Yes, work. I'm a contractor for City of San Antonio uh, on all their civic projects, SALs, uh, I'm a contractor for SALs, AT&T, uh, CPS, and, uh, and then just a lot of private individuals. Mm -hmm. Here uh, we go from Laredo to the Valley, to Austin, Fort Worth, Houston, El Paso. Are you aware of your neighbor to the south? Uh, you purchase that property? And what the neighbor to the south would be, I, I believe it's the church. It's going to be a church. It's going to be a church. I don't know. It's aware not going to be a, 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 a concern to us as much as it may be a concern to them. The church is going to be to the south, but I'm not sure what. Parcel track is exactly. They have, and I think somebody else may have another. They have a park. <coughs> oh, that is a north parcel. Yeah, they have one here. Yes, okay, okay. 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 South parcel. I'm sorry. Church is south of him. Right. There's the church, church is south, south. But that that parcel split. That. It's, yeah. It's yeah. To the other gentleman. Morning. Yeah. But that. But that's all farther south of him. <coughs> Just south. Of him. Yeah. The church, it, the church is right next door to him on the south. And then the other gentleman is the south of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And what's the process? Uh, we talked about the zoning at the last meeting. What going forward, how long would we think it would take and what would be resolved uh, in open council doors and 
we have to mail out notices. Yeah, and we, we will have to mail out notices and no, notify them that there will be a public hearing. Okay. We'll have a public hearing, and they'll have to be published, and there's some time frame in there. So I would <coughs> I estimate two months, maybe okay. the April meeting, maybe the May. Okay. But um, we do have to notify everybody and give them a certain amount of time, notify them of the public hearing, publish it. And then we can't vote on it the night of the, they can't vote the night of the public hearing. They have to vote later. Okay, so the next council meeting? Well, it's a number of days. Oh, and right. if we can get a special meeting, if we can get four people here for a special meeting, we can do that. If not, it'll have to be at a regular meeting when there's only three required. Okay. What about Saturday and Sunday? Will you be working on Saturday night? No, usually not. No work on Saturday and Sundays. Usually all of our work is typically Monday through Friday during daylight hours. But there are some projects that where we work downtown San Antonio, which are night operations, and uh, and it's usually from 9 to 5, and it's just maybe some, a few vehicles going in, loading up equipment, and coming in early in the morning. It's not very often, but... It does happen. But you wouldn't necessarily be working at... Absolutely not. No. If, if anything, it would maybe be some maintenance work. But exactly. But nothing loud. Loud, yeah. Right. And we're not a manufacturing company, so... No painting, no nothing. Nothing loud. So you're just going to drive in, park your vehicle, and go home? <laughs> That's the plan. That's the whole idea. You're tired. You wanted to rezone the entire park? Yes, the 16 acres. Yes, sir. And you all should have a letter from the property owner. The registered agent is Akbar Ali, 220 Ventures LLC. Requesting. Does the council have any other questions on the permit? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what business, uh, what business I don't see. Consider an act on the request from. 220 Ventures LLC, owners of the property located at 1770 South Foster Road, <coughs> with rezoning of property located at 1770 South Foster Road from Class 1 low intensity use residential to Class 2 medium intensity use commercial. start the process. Start the process. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I make, I make a motion that we uh, go ahead and start the process of sending out the letters for the rezoning of the property located at 1770 South Foster Road um, from a class one to a class two. And I'll second that. We have a motion on the floor by Councilman Bluski and a second by Councilman all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried unanimous. Next item on the agenda be new business. Item A, consider an act on project proposed resolution number 150-25205-R, a resolution providing for the appointment of John A. Lee as city attorney and providing for the effective date. The effect of this resolution will render null and void any past resolutions or appointments of interim city attorneys or plural for the city of China. Do we get proposals for the attorneys? We did get a proposal from him. No, oh, from attorneys. We November meeting, we, well, we had this, the this we council had the, agreed to get proposals yes. for our legal services. Yes, and uh, 
You only had one proposal for last year, too, which was Frank Garza's, and that agreement wasn't signed. So Correct. you had only received one proposal then, also. So we uh, we needed an attorney. I'm How sorry. many months have we had to get some proposals, or do we have some? That was my question. We have one. Okay. That's not some. We have nothing to do with the This but is not this is not the one to do with That's all we have. You have also Frank Barnes's, which the council turned down. Uh, we have to turn that down, and we're going to get the proposals. And we got another one. And you were going to get proposals last year all year, and, and no one got them then either. I contacted Tim. I think we need to get proposals. I don't see a problem with this. I don't see we why we need to can. find somebody that works in municipal law and get proposals. We are a municipality, and we need. I mean, we need this somebody city. to sit here with us and tell us if we're doing things right or wrong that deals with local government law. Well, I think. Uh, Mr. Mead has always, uh, he's been in our, our attorney before, everything was good, uh, he knows the people here, he can work good with Susan, and he's also agreed that we can use TML or if we need to get somebody specialty, we can do it, and uh, so I, I see no problem with getting it done. And for the, the city cannot afford what we've had before, and we all know that. And we will be in the same situation if we go out for, I mean, well, I have no problem doing another proposal, but I'm, I have a concern, but I have a concern is the city being able to afford an attorney with that, uh, with, uh, Mr. Mead has represented the city of China Grove before and did an outstanding job. I have no problem with him returning, therefore I make a motion that uh, a resolution for appointing John Mead uh, as our city attorney uh, effective immediately. I second. Do you have a motion on the floor? I also want to approve the proposed resolution 150205-R. I have a second from Councilman. Uh, party. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I think that we need to step back and look at what we're doing here. This piece of paper says, and my fee will be $200, which is $1, $100 less than I charge other clients. Okay, $200 a day, an hour, a year, a month. What are we doing? It's this is not a proposal. What, what are we getting? Mr. Meek, yeah, I mean, somebody needs to look up the walls like, and see how they're written. Do you, you, you want me to answer the question? Please, I'm asking you to work out. It's not in writing. It's the same thing that I charged the city when I was the state attorney for the last 15 years. Thank Let's you. get something in writing. We can have that corrected. Uh, could you have that? Let, me, let, me tell you about, let me tell you about the writing. I was here at the meeting when that young man Bob was talking about whether there was a contract with this firm or not. One thing that kind of disturbed me about that conversation was the following. This gentleman was telling the city council that his firm had a contract. Let me tell you about another writing that exists in the state of Texas. It's called the Code of Professional Responsibility and the Canons of Professional Ethics. It is a violation of the Canons of Ethics for an attorney to attempt to continue to represent a client, an absent client, has told them they don't want their representation. And that's what it appeared to me that that young man was done. Maybe he just ain't experienced, I don't know. But the fact is that I've represented the city for 15 years, maybe longer. So council member. Pardon me? Council member, you I, was, I was a council member for three terms. That's the best one. That's ancient. But, <laughs> but the fact is, the reason I became city attorney is that one meeting, uh, the mayor asked me not to run for city council again. He said because he'd prefer that I take over the job of the city attorney. And that was John Herzog. Uh, since that time, I have been the city attorney for, except for the past year. <clears throat> the fact is that, my, that when I first started, and, and for the full period of time that I continued to serve as city attorney, I charged the city reduced fees. 
I tried to limit the amount of time that I spent on dealing with the city business to what was necessary. I tried to limit the, even the time that I billed for when people would call me on the telephone and ask me a question. That didn't go down on my time sheet. The only thing I, I didn't bill for, when I, for a long time, I didn't bill for coming to the meetings. Even. I just did that because I wanted to come to the meeting and I could help advise the council as we went through the meeting. Um, I did charge for the executive sessions. I did charge for preparing ordinances. I did charge for litigation. I did charge for things that actually intensely was attorney work. But if you pick out a phone telling Mike or whoever called me, the answer to a question I might have, the city, the city wasn't built for that. And I still don't intend to do that. The fact is that this city doesn't need to pay sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. I think the most I ever built the city was probably in one year was maybe 20, 25,000. And that's when some real honest to goodness litigation was going on or when the, or when the uh, landfill issue was coming on. Unless I was actually working those hours, the city didn't get a bill for it. Sometimes, I think some years, the city was built maybe seven or 8,000. So, you know, the fact is, I think I know a good bit about municipal. I think, I, and, and I know a lot more about counties of ethics than the gentleman who was here as a city attorney at that meeting than I was at. Uh, <coughs> obviously. So, you know, it, this, this job is, is a job that is more or less at will employment. If somebody comes along and you think you do a better job than me, just tell me. I'm out of here. I, you know, I don't have any particular need for the job. I did it as a public service and requested to do so by the mayor many years ago. And I will do it again until somebody don't want me anymore. And I'll be gone. Or, I'll, or either that or I don't want to be here and I don't want to be gone. But it's, but it's not something that you're hooked, tied to, as the young man was implying at that meeting I was at. A lawyer can't continue to serve a client that doesn't want, didn't want to serve. And whenever you tell me you want to serve, we don't need to have a meeting. We don't need to talk about it in a meeting. I'll just say, goodbye. And the only thing I'll have to do to leave is, if there, have, if, if there is some pending litigation, currently pending litigation that I'm involved in, I'll have to withdraw from that litigation. And if, if there's no pending litigation, I won't have to do anything except say, see you guys later. That's the way that works. So my proposal is $200 and I the same thing I charged the last time I was city attorney. My proposal is that, I, that I'll come to the meeting when I'm asked to. If you want me to come to every meeting, I'll do that. That fact is that that I don't necessarily think unless there's something coming up that requires my advice that you need me to be telling you what to do. You run the city, not me. I don't intend to run the city. I don't intend to represent anybody sitting up there. My only client is the city of China Grove if you decide you want to pass this resolution. I don't represent the mayor. I don't represent any council person. Now, I'll talk to you if you want to pick up the phone and give me a call. I'm not going to charge the city for it because you're not calling me as a client. You're not my client. The city's my client. And that's what I propose now. If you can, want. we put something in writing, a little better. Than well, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. The only thing you really need to know is what I'm charging an hour. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, we, don't have, we don't have anything that really says that. Well, right in there, per hour. The fact yeah, that but it, I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not on. <laughs> but the fact is that this. It's not on a resolution or anything either. The fact yeah. is that all you need to know is that what my hourly rate is, and I'll do what I need to do to help the city. When you don't want me anymore, you need to know that I'll leave. And that's about, I mean, if you, you cannot have a binding contract with the, with the client if they don't want you. I'm just telling you, that's how much I charge for the time I devote to the city's business. And a lot of the time I devote to the city's business, like if you guys pick up the phone give me a call, you don't get charged that at all. And I think it's on the record here at the meeting, so I think, you know, if you want me to put it in writing, I'll do that too. But you know what you need to know right now. We appreciate that. And he does the same thing for court. For us, as a prosecutor attorney, I call him all day long every day. He doesn't bill us for anything. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Well, that's because I get a salary as a prosecutor. I don't get paid by the hour. In fact, I, so the point is that, that if you call me up with a recommendation on a ticket, I'm not going to charge for that because I consider that to be part of my salary. That's a whole different ballgame. That's a whole. That, that's an apple over here, and we're talking about an orange right now. So, and whatever. Excuse me. Whatever you want to do is okay with me. <laughs> the proposal in your hand is what was sent to the city. Right. Well, now all I know is what I read. 
know, but that's what. We could put something in the resolution. I, just adopt, adopt it into here. You know. Adopt what into the resolution. It, the into feet. the resolution on what? It, that, uh, for, it, our, for our. You know, you know, just so we have something in writing. I mean, this is like a blank check. You know, y'all were complaining. The, the or proposal many were complaining in your about hand, the last attorney. The proposal in your hand is what the attorney, Mr. Mead, sent us. He just told you, I think we can put. He will put per hour in there, or you can let we this can be the record. We can put it in a resolution. I'll be glad to put it in a yeah. resolution. I mean, that's all we need to do that, right? It, I don't think it needs to be there, but I'll be glad to put it there. Uh, yeah. Can I suggest something as a citizen? Yes. <laughs> Why don't you just make uh, a proposal, not a proposal, but uh, amend your motion to say that you Propose that the resolution be changed to reflect two hundred dollars an hour, and just let that go on the record. Okay. Okay. I'll take back that motion, and I'll <laughs> repropose it to um, accept Mr. Mead's um, the resolution with a two hundred dollar an hour fee for his services. Um, the proposed resolution is to appoint John Lee as our city attorney, effective immediately with a $200 hourly rate. Thank you. I second that. Do you have a second on your minute motion? Any discussion? Call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed?